uh, are an organisation that makes grants to literacy projects. Siobhan was a wonderful writer who um, burnt um, like a shining meteor. She left her royalties on the books to the trust to fund activities such as getting books to kids who wouldn't otherwise get them. So it's it's, it's, uh, it's all about books for Siobhan, it's all about story. I always wanted to, to do this lecture. I thought it would be a wonderful way of remembering Siobhan. So I'm going to hand you over to Matt now, and, and he will take you to places you've never been before. <laughs> I'll start with the question. What is the point of books? I mean, if an alien from the Andromeda galaxy came down to Earth and after inquiring about clones and the Kardashians <laughs> and motorways and the great British Bake Off, <laughs> then asked us what a book is for, what would we say? I'd then tell the alien what I now know to be true. Books can save your life. I don't mean that in a vague, airy, fairy way either. I don't just mean that books can enrich your life or make it a bit more valuable or help you impress your friends. But they can, of course, do those things. I mean that books can actually help keep you alive. Let me explain. When I was in my early 20s, I suffered a breakdown. I was in a state of anxiety and depression that I just couldn't get out of. I went to my parents' house in Newark-on-Trent to live for a while. And there I was at the age of 24, back in my teenage bedroom. But the thing with my teenage bedroom was that there were books there, books I'd read as a teenager. Everything from C.S. Lewis to Stephen King via Rosemary Sutcliffe, Sue Townsend and S.E. Hinton. Increasingly, over the next few months, I'd read more and more and more. It wasn't a magic wand. I still felt terrible, but it was a way of focusing on something that wasn't my own head. It was the only thing I had, really, as music often triggered panic attacks and I was phobic about taking pills. But I would also write, too, write little lines about what I was feeling like. The stuff I wrote was rubbish, but it helped. Reading and writing became very important to me. I'd lost the joy of reading for a few years, which can ironically happen when you study English at university, like I did. But now the passion was back. I wasn't able to socialise and found going outside difficult. I was very much at risk of drowning in my own mind, so books became my life rafts. They really did keep me afloat, even as the depression lingered. So reading heals. And not just me. I've heard from loads of people recently, especially young people, who have told me about how reading and writing helps them in real, tangible ways. And I strongly believe that books and reading shouldn't just be valued as things that help you get a job. They are so much bigger than that. Recently, our education minister has spoken about how the arts, including literature, are overvalued, and that, for the good of their career prospects and for society at large, 18-year-olds should think about doing something else at university other than reading books. This is, to paraphrase Chaucer, a load of bollocks. <laughs> I often talk about libraries, about how they are almost the only public spaces that don't like our wallets more than they like us. While fiction itself is an important space too. People don't just read books to escape. We read to find new parts of ourselves. We think we're in this one-room house. Books make you realise you're a mansion. Reading's the way to find the lost parts of you, to know what's there, what you have to work out how far you can dream. Those periods of my life when I shunned reading were the lost parts of my life. Books help us see ourselves and each other properly. They also help us become better, happier, more empathetic human beings. Which is, which is why it's so important that young people, people at school, are not put off books. Because the actual genuine proven benefits of books Things like imagination and education, uh, education and happiness are as necessary now as they have ever been. In Siobhan Dowd's novel, The London Eye Mystery, she says that knowledge can be like the skin on the surface of the water in a pond, or it can go all the way down to the mud. It can be the tiny tip of the iceberg or the whole 100%. 
Books give us the chance to go the whole 100%. So reading is now a rebellious act, a way of going deep in a world that wants us to stay shallow. Well, what books can do to societies, they can also do to individual people. Whether it is fiction or non-fiction, books can change you, and change you more profoundly than any drug in existence without damaging your liver. Books are one of the fundamental things that make us feel human. They are maps helping us locate who we really are. We must never sideline books or trivialise them or see them as a nice little middle-class luxury or GCSE the life out of them. We should never let this or any other government put any barriers between a human being and a book. Books are for all of us and for every stage of our life. We should be faithful to them in sickness and in health because they will always be there when we really need them. They are the still centre in the whirlwind of modern existence. They can help us and they can change us and make us better people. They help raise us. They sort us out. They can become our friends. They can be our medicine. They might one day even save our lives. Thank you. It was fantastic, it was a couple of moments that were really quite emotional in what he was talking about. Um, I work directly with people who are living with lots of suicide and um, different mental health problems and could really relate to a lot of what he was saying. Um, I think what he was saying about books being such a connection for people, um, especially when you do feel isolated, was really, really powerful and that idea that a book can literally save your life.